Okay, well, happy Tuesday afternoon, all. I'm going to do my uh, running around and work commute today on the 500X. I have a couple of things that I've got to haul. Uh, so the shad panniers and top box on here will do the trick for me. And uh, talk about a few upcoming projects and uh, things that I hope to do over the next week if they work out. And where do we start? So, uh, Spider Fest is coming up next week. I am not 100% sure if I can go or not. It depends on uh, work issues. So, if I can clear out my schedule just enough, I will uh, take off next week. Uh, it is May 1st through 4th. And uh, that's Wednesday through Saturday, I believe, if I looked at the calendar correctly. So I'll clear my schedule out if I can and plan on heading up uh, probably Tuesday morning or Tuesday midday, something like that, get on the road. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll stop anywhere along the way or just try to ride it straight through. Uh, it's a pretty long trip from here. Uh, if I looked at the Google Maps correctly, it was 750 or 780 miles, uh, Springfield, Missouri. So uh, it's, I don't know, 11 hour trip or something like that. So I might split it up across uh, half a day and another half a day, moto camp somewhere, and be a little fresher when I arrive, but we shall see. And then I would stay for the duration of the event, uh, probably head out Sunday morning, I guess, uh, if the thing is going on all the way through Saturday. Or, you know, if it's just not for me, then I could always pack up and come home early. It seems like it'll be pretty interesting. Uh, people from all over the world attend this uh, event, apparently. Uh, it's supposed to be the world's largest uh, spider gathering. So, we'll see how that is. Five hundred's not out of fuel yet, but it's low and I've got to run all the way to the Galleria area and around and around a little bit, so. Go ahead and fill this thing up while I have the opportunity and the cheap fuel nearby. tank bag on here today because I think it's going to rain and that's not a waterproof bag so I always have to uh, take it off of there put the uh, little rain cover over it which is just an annoyance I do like the bag though fuel prices are holding pretty steady uh, they went up 25 cents or so over the span of uh, just a few days and then they've tapered off right around 250 here in my neighborhood so it's okay So if I'm going to be taking the Riker uh, all the way to Missouri, that's it'll be roughly 15 to 1600 miles round trip without any extra riding around uh, in that area. So probably add a few hundred miles if I'm going to participate in any of the group rides and whatnot. Um, can't see what I'm doing. Yep, Ooh, over the bar. 650, <laughs> right on. I always try to round it off to the nearest quarter if I can. I don't know why, I'm just anal. Uh, that way when I look at my charge receipts, I know it was a fuel purchase. Uh, da, 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 da. Only 2.6 gallons, that's not much. So it still had quite a bit in there. It's a 4.5 gallon tank, I think it is. Yeah, I'm getting a pretty good scuff on that lid. Interesting. These lids are stupid expensive too. 170 bucks. That's an emissions controlled item, so they want to charge a pretty penny for them. 
All right, let's do my record routine here. It's not very windy today, that's nice. I say that and then it goes blowing around. I'm going to upgrade my phone soon. I've had this phone for two and a half, going on three years, and uh, it's just getting a little slow and kludgy. Uh, it's locking up on me a lot, doing a bunch of dopey stuff. I've tried the factory reset, and I pulled all my data off of it, factory reset, and I put just the applications back on there that I like and need and all that, but it's still slow and kludgy. So might be time for an upgrade. If I do that, I sure hope uh, Rockform makes a case uh, for this because that uh, twist lock case on there with a the magnet on the back is great. I love it. It's very secure and, uh, and the magnet on the back is, has a nice little side benefit of I can stick it on the side of uh, walls and computer cabinets and things like that when I'm doing my, my work. Make sure my pockets are zipped. That one is not. Okay. Oh, gonna let me, thank you. That uh, turn signal beeper uh, is something that I'm still trying to source. I've been scouring the internet and I can't find that company anymore. Um, I used to get it through uh, WeBike, I believe it was, and uh, the product or the company name is Smidzy, S-M-I-D-S-Y, and the product is their TSR-3, which is the turn signal reminder, and it's great for uh, commuters and even new riders, it would be really good because for anyone that's accustomed to riding in a car, driving a car, you have uh, turn signal noise, the beeper, blinker, clicker, whatever you want to call it. And uh, on a bike, you typically don't have that. And unless you've got auto canceling signals on a newer, fancier bike, you can drive around with your signal on, and that's not a good thing because people assume that you're turning or. I assume that you've forgotten and then don't pay attention when you really do turn. There's all kinds of problems with that. And I'm guilty of it. On my newer bikes, typically uh, bikes that I'm not familiar with, I won't push the, the cancel hard enough or something. Uh, and I'll look down and I've been going around the world to the left for two miles or something. Uh, so the uh, that reminder beeper on there is really good. And it has two different sounds. I don't want to do it in traffic just because I don't want to be an annoying person that's running around with their signal on. But um, when you leave it on too long without the brake applied, it goes to a much higher, louder trill. Uh, and you can hear it through your helmet at speed. It works pretty well. So this company uh, used to sell through WeBike and they I want to say they cost, uh, I don't know, $40 or something like that, $35, $40 each. It's pretty reasonable. They're very easy to wire in. You just tap your existing uh, power and ground. And uh, actually, it's not even power and ground. It's just ground, uh, your signal wires left and right, and your brake wire if you want the uh, cancel, the, the silencer option to where it doesn't beep when you've got the brake lever depressed activated. 
Anyway, so if any of the UK viewers out there run across this product or know where I can still get them, man, I would love that info. I'll probably buy, I don't know, five or ten of them and just stock them and keep them for a while. Because I put them on all my bikes. Oh, I should have sped up. It's very humid today. I keep steaming up my visor. So, back to Spiderfest. Um, working on my loadout list of things that I would need to take. Uh, that'll be you know, with the ride up, the ride back. Uh, probably a six day, seven day event total if I stay for the duration. So that's a little longer uh, duration trip than my last few that I've done and you know, longer than the ones that I've posted lately on the channel. Uh, certainly not my longest that I've ever done, but it's, you know, when you load out for a week, it's different than loading out for two or three days. Uh, just a little bit different gear selection and uh, you know, clothing items and personal hygiene stuff uh, if you're planning on true moto camping. Uh, if you're going to be hotel camping, it really doesn't matter. You can get by with just an overnight bag, but uh, if you're going to be out in the elements for multiple days at a time, usually over three days, then uh, I try to take uh, you know, more hygiene items, uh, something to wash and shave and that sort of thing. So I'm working on that loadout uh, and the bike prep list and things that I need to do before I take off. Uh, the main thing is going to be either finishing my uh, max mount adapter that I talked about or uh, the short term fix is to get the uh, passenger seat accessory uh, which I wouldn't mind having anyway because my daughter wants to ride with me on the back and uh, I need the passenger seat so if I get that with the fold down backrest then uh, That'll give me a wider perch to uh, drop the dry bags on the back and strap them down. It's probably the better option for right now. Uh, I do really, really want to get that max mount adapter done, uh, and I've got enough information now. I think that I could uh, pull the trigger on having someone manufacture it, or I'll just uh, go the, the cheap hillbilly route and do the metal hacking myself uh, for, you know, a rough first attempt just something to get on the back to where I can try out the idea and give myself some more room and uh, then if it works well then I'll have it professionally made or buy a professionally made one and modify it to that use or whatever When a highway merge, you can't be real nice. If you want to get over here to this uh, HOV lane, you just have to make a spot. These people are not going to let you in. This is Houston. You don't get engraved invitations here. You have to make your own way. It's very rare for someone to slow down and let you in. Or rather, not speed up and block you. <laughs> that's, that's the typical game. They see you coming, they'll nail the gas just to box the spot. So anyway, the uh, Riker on the highway is going to be my concern uh, for the Spiderfest trip. I don't know how well it's going to do on a uh, long highway trip, you know, constantly battling the alignment and the twitchy steering behavior. Um, if I have time and I can get it done, which that's on my to-do list for today, I need to make an appointment with James Thorne at Thornolis, sorry, Thornolis.com and uh, see if he can put me back in for a realignment. I'm going to ask him to give it just a little more toe in on the front to uh, help the straight line tracking a little bit maybe. Let's see how that goes. I'm hesitant to do any major changes to the bike right before a big road trip, but... Uh, if it calms down that twitchy side-to-side -side hunting nonsense, then uh, it would be well worth it for that 15 or 1800 mile trip.
this thing, I wouldn't hesitate taking it across country tomorrow. I can never say enough good things about this bike. It's just such a great machine. Uh, it's a good all-around machine. It's not super fast. It's not, you know, it doesn't have great ground clearance or great suspension or great anything, but it's very good at everything. Uh, it's got plenty of power to run highway speeds. You, know, you can run it 80, 90 miles an hour all day long. Uh, upper reach is a little over 100, probably 105, maybe 110 if you're lucky on a good day. Uh, so it's not super fast, but I'm not on the Autobahn, so I don't need to go 100 plus on it. And if you keep the speeds on this thing down to, let's say, under 70 for long trips, uh, it gets really good fuel economy. Anything above 70, it starts dropping off pretty quick. Uh, I've had a few long extended highway runs where, uh, like trips to Oklahoma with baggage and everything on it, running 80 on the highway and it got much lower fuel economy than it usually does down in the high 40s so it drops quite a bit at those speeds um, the uh, overall road manners are just great though I mean the, the straight line tracking the comfort it's got a big plush seat on it and it's very comfy and it's windy today we had really good weather over the weekend, and now uh, we're going back into a rainy, uh, rainy spell. We've got some stuff coming in today and tomorrow, apparently. But hey, I'd rather have it through the middle of the week than on the weekends. I think I've mentioned it before. I've noticed that a lot of people, when I'm coming up behind them on this bike, they either scoot over immediately or they slow down in front of me. I think they misinterpret the look of this bike as maybe a police bike or something uh, because of the light arrangement on the front of it and the fact that it's white and black. I don't know. As long as they don't cut over in front of me and nail the brakes, I don't care. Going back home that way is going to suck. I wonder what's happening there. That's full stop. Yep. Ooh, that is full stop. Well, I definitely won't be going that direction.
taking it easy on this uh, front tire I just replaced it with the uh, Michelin uh, Pilot Road 5 uh, I like it so far it feels good it's still got that waxy uh, shipping coating on it so taking it easy until that's worn off after the first hundred miles or so don't want to end up pushing it into a corner literally pushing Whew. that's no good usually recoverable but doesn't feel very good one of my viewers was uh, asking me an interesting question about the cub it's a good question uh, is it possible to stall it uh, like a traditional motorcycle? Um, my thought on that is no. Uh, I haven't really been able to figure out a, uh, a method or mechanism that would uh, let you stall the motor because the centrifugal clutch is going to disengage uh, before or slip before the uh, motor would bog out. I guess under the right circumstances, you might be able to, let's say you're cruising along at, you know, whatever, 15 or 20 miles an hour in first or second gear or something like that, and you lock up the rear brake, jam the rear brake. That might be able to stall the motor uh, because the uh, clutch is engaged at that point and you're giving it a sudden stop before the uh, centrifugal uh, action could release it. I don't know, it's possible don't really want to go trying that on my bike so back to spider fest my brain is still spinning i've got a hundred thousand things going on in my head right now um spider fest uh another part of the selection is whether i want to uh tent camp or hammock camp now i would prefer geez i just can't pick a good lane um i would prefer to hammock camp but it kind of depends on the grounds uh, I've never been. I don't know what the uh, amenities of the location looks like. So finding a uh, suitable spot with a couple of trees that aren't already occupied might be a trick. I don't know. Um, I do have plenty of hammock camping gear. I've got plenty of tent camping gear, too, for that matter. Um, hammock's just easier, uh, and it gets me up off the ground if it's rainy. Uh, so, I don't know, equipment selection is the next uh, part of my loadout list, trying to figure out what I'm going to take. And then, I don't know. I mean, my, uh, my go-to tent kind of suffered a, a loss uh, up at Coda for the MotoGP that REI Half Dome 2 Plus, uh, most of the tie-outs got ripped through on the fly. So, uh, due to that wind damage, so the fly is you know, useful for wind block uh, to some extent and rain and whatnot, but it's not gonna help secure the tent anymore uh, as an extra tie-out point. So if I knew I could take a different tent, I've got what three others that I could take I don't really like them as much as I do that uh, REI uh, I also looked at possibly getting what are you doing dude stay over there um, I also looked at potentially getting a Redverse uh, Atacama which is a cool moto camping tent but that thing's not small it's a uh, it's little beefy um, it's 14 pounds, so it's definitely not on the ultralight list. Um, it uh, packs down reasonably small. I think 21 by 12 or 21 by 14 or something. I can't remember the exact specs. I don't know how thick. Uh, but they recommend packing it in like a 50 liter dry bag. Holy monkey, that's huge. Um, then... Of course, the Riker's probably not going to fit in there because of the front track width. Uh, I'll look at the the garage opening uh, width on the, the Atacama and find out how wide it is and if it's possible to maybe catty-corner the Riker into that. Uh, so it might be a possibility. I don't know. We'll see. I, I would much prefer to use some of my uh, nice cottage gear that I've got for uh, hammock camping, uh, Sierra Madre, uh, Stratos and that sort of thing. Uh, it's fully weatherproof, gets me off the ground, and it's a lot more comfortable to sleep. So, 
Anyway, I'm going to see if these guys are back from lunch yet. Kind of doubt it. Yeah, they should be back. All right. I'm going to shut this down for a minute. All right. So here's why I like luggage on my bikes. For everybody that says, ah, I'm making it look like a grandpa machine. Yeah, okay. I'm not a grandpa yet. I hope to be one day. Two laptops loaded up in bubble wrap. Let's see if I can make it fit without any major modifications. And I put the power supplies on the side. That makes it a problem. But can he do it? Oh, 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 can he do it? No, I'm going to have to take some of that off. But the laptop itself will fit like a champ. They just uh, bundled up the power supplies on one end here. Let's just crush some of that down. Don't need all that padding. I asked him for a strap or two of uh, padding. That was nice. Didn't need enough to send it to China by donkey. There we go. That ought to work. Oh, yeah, that'll work. And clunk. Oddly shaped. Fits plenty well, and there's actually a lot more space in there. It's just wide. Anywho, the virtues of luggage on a motorcycle. Do -do 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 -do. The weather's been holding off. That's nice. Uh, we are apparently, I just checked the weather report. I saw it flash. Uh, when I was parking here on, on my phone, I saw AccuWeather came up with a warning. Uh, apparently, tomorrow through tomorrow night into Thursday, we are going to be getting stomped, uh, saying severe winds with uh, lar uh, damaging winds and large hail and you name it. This weather lately, man, it makes me feel like I'm living back in Oklahoma again. Growing up around... Uh, crazy weather up there in Tornado Alley uh, kind of gives you a different perspective on weather. Uh, down here when I moved to the coast everybody's always talking about hurricanes. Oh, hurricanes, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I could care less about hurricanes, man. The only thing you got to worry about with hurricanes really is the water. Uh, um, <laughs> you can see them coming for days away. You know they're on their way. There's no surprise. The only surprise, I guess, is how bad they hit, uh, or you know, the damage from the the wind and sustained water and everything else. But at least you can plan for it. Tornadoes are a totally different animal, man. They they just drop down out of nowhere, tear stuff up, erase you, erase your house, and there's no warning. So growing up in the tornado belt up in Oklahoma. We have uh, storm sirens everywhere, and you learn to listen to those things. Because if you don't listen, that could be your butt. Uh, I'm not going that way. Um, yeah, when those alarms go off, man, that could be your butt right there. You've got a few minutes to uh, get underground or seek shelter or whatever. Those are the ones I worry about. Hurricanes, man, uh, who cares? I've been through several of them here in Houston area already, just in the last 20 years I've been here. And uh, I mean, I don't totally dismiss them as a non-event. They can they can get nasty, but eh, it's nothing like a tornado. And the other thing in uh, Oklahoma, anywhere through Tornado Alley, really, uh, is the hail, the wind and the hail. Ugh. And wintertime, of course, you get sleet and ice storms. You don't get as much snow as you get ice. But, uh, yeah, the hail, nasty thunderstorms through the, the spring and summer months. You always have to keep your cars indoor or be ready to move them real quickly if hail is coming because they will get pockmarked up so bad you can't resell them. You can have it if you're going to go. I 
haven't been through this uh, particular section of roadway up here leading to 610 in a while. I'm not even sure if I can uh, get on 610 south where I want to go. They've changed a lot of these uh, highway entrances and exits and side roads and everything else. One of these days I need to go to an allergist again, maybe get on those once a month allergy shots or something. I did that for a few years and it seemed to help, but uh, the last two or three years here in Houston have been real bad for allergies. So much wind and pollen and just crazy stuff in the air, everybody's been having a hard time seasonal allergy sufferers like myself and we're having an even harder time than usual. Okay, so I'm going to take a chance and go down here and see if this uh, entrance at 610 is finished or available yet. Otherwise, the uh, one that I know works is right here, Post Oak. Oh, and it's starting to rain. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and take this one because I need to stop and put my uh, gear on, rain gear. Don't really want to stop in the gravel. Stop there either. Now yeah, I'll just keep going, see if I get lucky. Can't tell which direction this is blowing in from. Really want to get to my client site soaking wet. That's the other thing about luggage on a bike. For all these uh, naysayers to luggage and the guys that poo-poo me for putting uh, bags on a bike because it makes it not so sexy or whatever, but what kind of weather do you ride in, man? I mean, if it's sunny and clear everywhere you go or you don't commute and you're only taking comfortable Saturday rides, I get it, but uh, what do you do for the rest of those times when uh, the weather changes like this? Living down here on the coast, you have to always be ready to suit up in rain gear unless you're already wearing uh, full weatherproof, you know, Gore-Tex, whatever. So if you got to change clothes or keep other stuff with you, then uh, where do you put it? If you have a backpack, okay. Oh, hey, man, it looks like that went through. I'm going to have to check that out. That little side road didn't used to be there. They just completed it. I wonder if it goes over to the access road of the highway. Huh. I'll have to come exploring when I'm not on a deadline. Hmm. Yeah, so anyway, where do you put your rain gear? You know, if you don't have panniers or a tank bag or a tail bag, backpack, I guess. But I'm not a fan of backpacks. I've been through that. Yeah, so the access road is over there, but I don't know if there's actually a ramp up onto 10 anymore. Or 610, not 10. This is what I was really trying to avoid because I know this is under construction. Oh well.
road closed. Oh, great. So now I do have to go around. Detour. Alrighty. Good stuff. This whole area has been under construction forever as part of the 610 project. Uh, or 290 and 610, I guess. Um, but I don't know... Uh, what the schedule on it is when they think they're going to have it done. I don't know. Detour left. I oh, don't know. I don't think so. Well, I don't know. Maybe they're running us down the opposite side over there. Huh. 610 frontage detour. Okay. I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I just don't know how we're getting over there. They're going to have to split that side. If they make me go back north, it's going to be annoying. doesn't work then I gotta come back that way and go down another street nope doesn't look like it 610 frontage huh oh man I kind of have to go this direction anyway but would have much rather taken the highway to get where I'm going I haven't ridden this bike in a while. I just, I forget how nice it is to ride. Uh, it's just so effortless. The handling is balanced. It steers and tracks without any fuss. It takes big bumps like that. That actually got me out of the saddle. Uh, it takes big bumps like that without disrupting its balance. Uh, it's just fantastic. Oh, I see what they're wanting to do. They're wanting to route everybody back around that way. That's kind of a roundabout way to get there. Nah. I'm already this far over. I'll just continue. I'll take Shepard down where I need to go. So I replaced the uh, the Pilot Road 4 that I had on the front of this. It had about, uh, I want to say 12,000 miles on it, maybe a little more. Uh, I'd have to look back on my maintenance records to know when it was replaced the first time. Um, I put a uh, replacement on it. Uh, at the same time, I replaced the rear uh, after my first flat because uh, it had the... Pirelli Scorpion Trail or something like that on it. They were just not very good tires in my opinion. And uh, I couldn't, I didn't want to replace with another one of those and I didn't want to mismatch set. So I went ahead and put Pilot Road 4s on front and rear on this guy. So I went through a couple of Pilot Road 4s on the rear due to punctures and problems and whatnot. Uh, and I think I'm on my second one or third one on the back right now and it's pretty fresh. It only has... Uh, I don't know, a couple thousand miles on it. Um, the uh, front one never did need replaced all through that time. And uh, it was getting a little thin. It had uh, some scalloping, uh, sawtoothing on the, the edges of the tread blocks a little bit. Uh, it wasn't really a performance problem. It had plenty of grip uh, and it was still sure-footed, but it was getting noisy on the highway. There was a lot of hum uh, at road speed so I just thought you know I want to replace it anyway so I was looking for an excuse to put a pilot road 5 on there and I took this thing in for just a you know inspection and checkup uh, last week and they had a appropriately sized pilot road 5 sitting on the tire shelf and I just grabbed it and said hey put this on there while you're at it I had them put in a 90 degree valve stem too. I didn't even check that, I forgot to look. I hope they indexed it right side instead of left side. I don't know, I'll find out. I like having them indexed uh, on the upside of the bike when it's on the uh, side stand. 
just makes getting in there easier. That's the side that the disc is on on this bike, but um, it just makes more sense to have it facing uphill. rattling those laptops around back there if I can avoid it. They're padded, but still. twisties. Yeehaw. See, even through big, deep bumps like that, this thing doesn't get upset. Its composure is uh, steady. It doesn't change the uh, tracking or anything like that. It's just a great bike. I wouldn't call it a canyon carver, but man, it just does everything so well. It's a master of none, but it does so many things so cleanly and effortlessly. lane is which here anymore what's going on with this it's diagonal and not straight is there a straight through i don't know yeah, they need to restripe this that's nowhere near even correct this lane is pointing over to the curb over there the joys of road construction in houston This is another one of those roads that's been under construction forever. Uh, I think this project started six, seven years ago, just for this little two mile stretch here. We just tend to have a lot of that in Texas. These road projects that just languish on and on forever. I don't know how those contracts work, but I would think that they would get bonus for completing early. And it doesn't seem to be the case. They just keep milking it forever, never finish it up. Low speed balance on this bike is great too. I haven't put my feet down at all.
I know this jackass is looking for the opportunity to cut me off or run me over. I've got somebody right up my ass, so I can't really stop. Uh, on the cell phone, yeah, typical. Leave him back there somewhere else to run into somebody else's car, not me. The diagnostic, well, yeah, I mean, the diagnostic will test stuff, but in order for us to figure out which drive is bad, really all you need to do is go into the uh, RAID manager when you first start it. So usually it's like Control H or Control R or one of the function keys or something. It'll have a pop up on the screen when it's detecting the drives for the RAID array. Uh, you just go into the RAID manager and then look at arrays, and it'll tell you which array is degraded and which one is failing or pending failure or whatever and uh, it'll tell you exactly which drive it is. Drive zero, one, whatever. Oh, really? Okay, so it's having more problems. That's interesting. Well, maybe it's memory or backplane or... Yeah, I'm planning on it. Uh, my schedule is stacking up all of a sudden because uh, I had one appointment that uh, didn't happen today and now they want me to come out tomorrow. So I don't know. I'll figure out a way to get them. Yeah, I know. i got to figure it out. I have to triage it and figure out who's doing what. Um, this other one is a cutover, so I might have to do it, but we'll see. Okay, yeah, just let me know, and uh, we'll sort it out. Okay, thanks. Bye. All right, sorry, everyone. I'll probably have to delete most of that audio because I was on a phone call. Um, the one drawback about these bags, the Shad uh, SH-23s, it's the smaller ones that they just released uh, recently for the 3P system. Um, I like the size of them, uh, and they're much lighter than the, the bigger boxes. Uh, they only weigh like a pound and a half or two pounds each. They're really light. Unfortunately, they won't self-latch. You have to use the key to latch them. So when you get somewhere and you want to get in them, you've got to fiddle with the key to unlock them. And then, of course, you have to relock them before you go anywhere so they don't flap in the wind. A little drawback, but, you know, little trade-offs in life. So I'm going to relock this guy. I think I need, yeah, it's some uh, graphite. The lock is a little sticky right now, unless I'm using the wrong key again. Uh, it's not getting all the way down in there, so they've gotten wet. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, I need to lube that lock cylinder a tiny bit. Anywho, oh, while well, I've got these out, definitely lock this because of the stuff that's in there. So you lock that, and it simultaneously locks the release handle and the open handle. So, very good design. I like that. I need to take my laptop, so I've got to get into this bag now. I bought this set later than the other set, so I'm on two separate keys. Um, what I might do is take the tumbler, the extra tumbler that came with this, and key that. But just haven't gotten to it yet. Not much spare time these days. Okay, I'm going to shut this down and I'll uh, rejoin you all later.